Hi, and thanks for choosing Pebblehost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up a server using Proxmox. So let's get right into it. So when buying your dedicated server, if you did select Proxmox on the install, this won't apply to you. But if you selected a different install when you bought your server, then we're actually going to change it now. So go to your Synergy page and scroll down where you can find Operating System Reload. You can then click Profile and then click Proxmox Virtual Environment and then click Reload Operating System. You'll then want to copy this password and put it somewhere safe and then click I understand that this will delete all data on the disk. Check that and then click Reload Operating System and as you can see it's starting to load it. This may take a while so just give it some time. Alright, so now the OS reload has completed. So now if we go to our email, as you can see it says my server will be ready for use within the next 20 to 30 minutes. So now we just have to wait, and then once we've waited we can click on this link and it will take us to Proxmox. And then down here, these are the details that we use to log into Proxmox. Alright, so it's now been 5 minutes, we can click the link. It may say this, however do not worry it is safe. So all browsers will have something at the bottom where it will say something like this, and then you can click proceed. And as you can see, it's taken me to my Proxmox login. If we go back to our email, as you can see the username is root, and then the password is the password that we copied earlier. So for our username, we'll put in root, and then for our password, we'll simply paste our password in and click login. It will say this, but just click OK. Alright, so we're now in Proxmox. And the first thing you want to do is you want to click on your dedicated server on the left. And then on the right, you can click Shell. The Shell will then open a new window like this. We can then type in nano space slash etc slash network slash interfaces. And then press enter. And as you can see, it's brought up a few things here. You will then need to use the arrow keys to navigate. So you can just use the arrow keys until we get to here where it says hashtag up id root add and then an ip and then you want to go over to the u and press backspace and now it's taken away the hashtag and now it, this text is white and then we want to go to the end of the ip with the slash and just get rid of the rest of this ip and then we want to go back to synergy and then we want to scroll down to our ips and then we want to get our secondary ip which is this one and then type it in right here so our IP was 194.213.27 and now that's done you can then press ctrl x and then press y to save and then you can press enter and then we can simply just close this out then once again back on proxmox you want to make sure you selected your server and then click reboot and then just click yes all right so our server has now rebooted and now we want to go to create VM, put in a name, we can put whatever we want, I'll just put in Pebble for this example, and then just click next. It will then take us to the OS tab, and here we're going to change the ISO image, and I'm going to use sent OS stream 8 for this example. So we'll just click that, and then we'll click next. Then we'll click next again, and then for the hard disk, the only thing you might want to change here is the disk size. So of course you can change this, I'm just going to put this at 64 gigabytes and then we can click next and this will be your cpu and once again the only thing you really need to change here is your cores so you can change this to whatever you like however the maximum amount of cores you can go up to is the amount of threads that your dedicated server has so my dedicated server has eight threads so i could use up to eight cores however i'm just going to put it on six for this example we'll then click next and this has taken us to our memory so then we can select this and change this to how many megabytes of memory we want. So this right here is 6 gigabytes. Then we can click next again. And here you want to make sure that your bridge is VMBR0. If it is that, you can then click next. It will then take you to the confirm tab where we can click finish. And now if we go over to the left on our server, we can click the arrow. And as you can see, we have our VM right here. Then we want to go to the console on our VM. And then we want to click start. So as you can see, it's brought up this menu. We then have to use arrow keys again to navigate. I want to press up and then select the install center West stream 8. We'll then press enter. It will then take us to this where it's just loading everything up. 
Then as you see, it says starting installer. All right, so now we're in the setup menu of CentOS Stream 8. And I'm gonna select English, United Kingdom, and then obviously you can set your language or anything that you want as well. And then I'll click continue. It is gonna be a bit slow as it is a virtual machine, just, so just give it some time. And the first thing we want to go to now is network and host name. So just click that. And then we want to go to configure at the bottom. Once we're in this menu, we will then want to click the IPv4 settings and change the method from automatic to manual. And then we want to click add. So the address, this is gonna be your additional IP address that we used earlier. So mine was 194.213.3 and then .27. So once again, that is your additional IP, not your main one. Then we can press tab to move into the next box and our net mask is gonna be 32. And then our gateway is gonna be our primary IP. If you're not sure what yours is, once again, we can go back. And as you can see on our IP allocation, this was our additional one, and the one on top is our primary one. So as you see, it's the same IP, apart from that it has a 25 instead of a 27 at the end. So we'll go back here, and we'll put in the same IP. However, we'll change the 27 at the end to a 25, just like that. You can then set whatever DNS server you want. For this example, I'm going to put 1.1.1.1. And then we can click save and at the top we want to enable this to on and then we can click done on the left then we want to go to our installation destination and you want to make sure that your hard disk is selected then click done we then want to click on the root password and this is where you'll make a new password you can make this whatever you want but just don't forget it so i've typed my password and once again in the confirm box and then we can click done you can also change the time zone and stuff if you want to go into time and date. You can then select where you want to do it. So I just click London. And then after we've done that, we can then click begin installation. And this is also going to take a while. So just give it some time. All right. And as you can see, my sent OS has now installed. And now I need to click reboot system at the bottom. So once it has rebooted, it will then take you to this menu where you have to click on licensing, click I accept the license agreement, and then click done. And then we can simply just click finish configuration and then we'll be taken to the screen which says welcome where we can click next and next again and then just click skip then we can just type in just a username so let's put in pebble and it'll put it in that as well we can then click next and then also set a password so we can type in our password there we go i've now typed in my password i can click next and now it says i'm ready to go and i can click start using centos stream it will then take us to this menu where we can just click the X. And as you can see, we are now in the OS. And the first thing we're going to do is check our network. So go to the Activities tab, and then go to Firefox. Then from here, we can just go to any random website we want. So let's just go to YouTube, for example, or just search it. And if it loads, that means we now have Wi-Fi, which is what we need. So then we can just close out of that. And now we're going to connect our SSH. So open your SSH client, mine happens to be Putty. And then for the host name or IP address, we're going to put in our additional IP. So that was 194.213.3.27. And then we can click open. We can then click accept on this as well. And then when it says login as, we're going to use our username, which was root. And then for the password, this is the password that we actually used when we were creating our virtual machine. This is not the password you were given in your email. So once again, just put in your password that you created. Your password actually won't show here, and that is for security reasons. You can then press enter. So as you see, I did type it in wrong once, as obviously it's harder to tell if you made a mistake or not, as you can't see the password. But then I did get in, and as you can see, it's all set up. So that is pretty much everything you need to know to start off with Proxmox. If you do need help with Proxmox, feel free to open a ticket in our support channel on Discord. Our Discord has 24-7 support. If this video did help out, definitely leave a like and also subscribe. And hopefully, I'll see you next time.